This is Aimori. She's only 5 foot tall, but she's now the climbing world champion. So I spent 13 hours trying to analyze and understand how she does it. How does she get more reach? And how does she get more effectiveness in the climbing? And I want to share with you the 5 things that I found that will help you gain more distance, gain more reach, especially with coordination climbs and also with static climbs. Let's dive in. So this is Women's 1 of the Bolden Elite Finals of the IFSC uh, Japan in Morioka. Uh, so it's very interesting competition. I love this first boulder. It's uh, kind of a coordination boulder first, but let's see how she does. So at first, she does not make it. If you can spot her mistake right now, comment down below. So let's see on a second attempt what she does. So the second attempt is a little bit more successful, and here is why. So let's rewind back a little bit. She didn't really feel much confidence here, she didn't really feel the movement, and she was actually looking at her handhold. So you can see, this is a big mistake when it comes to like coordination climbs. So you can see her eyes line up with the handhold, she's looking there. Big mistake. Big mistake for all coordination climbs. What you should do is actually look at where you want to land. And let's have a look at what, how she adjusts the second time. Second time, it's a lot more cleaner. She commits faster to the movement, doesn't fret around too much, and she looks at what she's doing. She's actually looking at the foothold first. So if you can see clearly, she's actually eyeing up the foothold first, keeps it locked, and only the last second she pops her eyes to the handhold. Her eyes maintain to the foothold, and she's actually extending her foot first. Her foot actually hits the of where she wants to go first before her hand lands. So this is a very, very key aspect of coordination class. Sometimes you really want to be able to get your weight across first before you do anything else. Foot, hands together. In fact, I think the foot lands first before the hands match. And this is a very, very uh, keen example of any coordination climbs. Um, and it, sometimes distance is a big factor for short climbers. But actually, if you switch your focus to landing your feet first, Sometimes you get into better positions and more favorable favorable positions uh, for you to stick the landing. So another one here, this next one is extremely difficult um, because I thought that she might not be able to be tall enough to reach. And she, yeah, so uh, her technique is a little bit off here. Let's see how she adapts and we will, co we will compare. But let's have a look right now. So the problem is, is that she's, you know, she's the first time trying to learn the move, um, but if you look at her hips, her hips, uh, her back is kind of like arched a little bit in this funny, funky position. Um, there's no nice like, uh, there's no nice, nice attention springing through. Uh, everything is kind of bent. Everything is, uh, you know, not super nice. This is a little bit bent. Uh, her hips are kind of a weird position. Her back is kind of arched. Um, yeah, so not very good. Her her leg. Right, her leg, is, the right leg is still standing here, so you have this rotation so very easily. What you want to do is form a base of triangle. So what you really want to do is to get the base of support as uh, clean as possible. You want to have your pressure over here, maybe ideally some smearing action over here, and build this base of support um, that helps you establish on the hold or on the wall a lot better. Um, she managed to stick this, so let's go back here. Swings cleanly. There we go, feet first before hand. So um, that reiterates, reiterates, reiterates the point that sometimes you want to look um, where you're going to step first. It gives you a bit more stability and your hands respond to your feet a lot better. So let's see let's see if she changes much here. Uh, these, by the way, are the La Sportiva No Edge shoes. So let me know if any of you are wearing them. I really have no idea what the difference between no edge shoes and edge shoes. I think no edge shoes maybe give you a bit more smearing power, a little bit more softer feel. Um, so it really depends. Maybe it works better with uh, these soapy volumes. So again, she's trying to build that base, uh, but she, she kind of slipped here. So let's see how she does in her last attempt. This is her final attempt. Uh, let's see what she can do. I think uh, she's, she's adjusting a little bit here. She's actually smearing with the heel a little bit. So usually when you smear with these volumes, you want to smear a little bit with your most of your front part of your shoe, your toes, the balls of your feet. And there we go. Perfect, perfect stance right here. So you can see she builds this base of support. 
So this is nice triangle. So basically, her base of support is much, much wider compared to previous uh, first attempt, where her legs were kind of straight like that. So yeah, this is the kind of um, the final position you want to kind of end up in. And her hips are a lot more favorable in this position. So as you can see here, she kind of focuses very well. She smears deliberately and look, her hips are beautifully into the wall. Um, nothing much to say here. Nice straight, good postures. Um, and yeah, this great climbing by I more manages to fulfill that tension. Her leg is nice and straight to hold that push pull tension. Um, well done, great climbing by Aimori. Alright, so for women's number two, this is Aimori. We had some kind of uh, doubt that Aimori could do coordination climbing because she's known as like a lead static specialist. So at this point, Aimori is a few attempts into women's number two. Um, her first attempt didn't go very well. She kind of slapped the first hold. And she's still slapping the first hole again. Uh, so she's kind of not really aiming to go direct. So this is the third thing I found about Aimori is that she actually adapts, right? She adapts. She's actually brushing that hole quite a lot. <laughs> but she's adapting, right? So first mistake, a like, very common mistake, especially with pedal dinos or just direct dinos in general, you're aiming at the handhold. Actually, you want to aim slightly further than the handhold. You want to go for the second move. So let's see. Aimori this time actually kind of like go straight into the right hand compared to the first time. So we look very closely later, she's actually aiming to grab the higher hand hold. And that helps establish a better position because you are actually getting your body into the like right under the hole a lot better compared to if you're just reaching out to it. And that's why the third tip is to actually extend further, reach further than what you think you should do. And that's a bit Big ask if you can't even reach the first hole, but that's exactly the point. That's the trick, actually. If you find uh, people who are very good at coordination climbs, they actually tend to aim a little bit further and aim to plant your feet and establish that base of support better. She actually launches and pump pow. You can see the timing and the rhythms a lot different. She's actually reaching for the further hole, and that gives her the better position. So when she actually actually aims for this hole, you can see her body is more in line with right underneath the hole. And this will be very evident later on. Even in static climbing, you want to have your head and your body right underneath the hole. And that's how she manages to do this coordination move. So we're on to women's fall. You can see Che Hyun Seo also um, actually finding quite a nice rest position uh, over here. Um, that's that jib is literally like nothing. It's incredible what these athletes can do. But she has a bit of trouble going into this right hand. Uh, this is the next attempt. Uh, let's see if she tries anything different. So the problem with uh, heel hooks, right? Um, trying to get... Whoa, she does some kind of crazy uh, 360 spider move. Um, yeah, the problem with the heel hooks is that it's it's sometimes a bit, a bit too uh, limiting in terms of getting your hips in position. So... Uh, we'll see here that she was trying to go to her right hand, but uh, I don't think her heel really deserves any any credit here because she's actually her heel is actually limiting her body and doesn't give her the enough leverage. So this is another example where Brooke Rabbit Two is really trying to heal something, trying to get as much purchase as possible, but uh, she's kind of like tangles herself up. You know, she kind of like doesn't seem so comfortable with the heel. And so let's see how Aimori does it. Aimori goes feet first, right. Um, smears the toe with the left. She's a monster. She's so strong and so precise. Um, she knows exactly what to do. That crazy one arm lock off is insane. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at this. So, boom! She uses her toe, smearing on the volume, gives herself enough space. Uh, she doesn't really, you know, lock herself up with her heel, and she manages to bump nicely across. And she goes for the top. Incredible climbing by I Mori. So if we have a second look, closer look, um, your, your toes actually give you so much more reach compared to your heels. If you're tempted to heel, consider, and you can't really get the reach, consider using your toe. So um, yeah, let's look at the replay. She's amazing. She knows exactly where to go. Her eyes are locking into the positions where she wants to put her feet. Um, and yeah. She gives herself enough room to be able to shift her body, lock off to the left, aim to the right. And here she's trying to heal, but in the end of the day, she switches back to her toe. You can see very clearly. 
Uh, she just prefers to toe a little bit more, even though it's not the most secure position, right? Like you, you feel comfortable with your heel, you feel like you can engage your glutes a lot, but sometimes it just doesn't give the reach that you need. And so that's why Aimori switches back to the toe. Uh, super quick, uh, no hesitation there to give her that extra push. Yes, she pulls up with her hands a little bit more, but she wouldn't be able to otherwise if she was sticking with the heel. So now we have Ayamori on the lead wall, and I want to show you how she manages to stay on the wall and how she's, beco how she's become such a phenom in the climbing world because she has developed a certain flair, a certain rhythm for the static climbing uh, on the lead wall. I want you to notice where her hands are. I want you to notice where her head is, okay? So pay attention to where her hands are, where her head is, um, especially when she's transitioning across. Her hands are always nice and straight. T-Rex arms, not gonna make it. Uh, of course, when you do lock off, you wanna lock off nice and strong and engage your shoulders, um, but look at her. She's always moving her head first before moving on to the next hold. And I really want you to kind of understand this concept uh, for beginner climbers. If you're an advanced climber, what are you doing here? Uh, you already know all this. <laughs> but yeah, see, you can see, kind of look, before she reaches her right hand over to bump, bump across, she's moving her head underneath her hands first. So you can see almost every move, I don't really need to kind of cherry pick an example. Hands as high as possible, going high, hit right underneath her hands so that her weight is directly underneath there's no room for swinging area there's no room for excess momentum before she secures the next move hands hit and then move hand hit under and then move super beautiful climbing uh, this is the way um, you know like Greek climbers should climb and short climbers tend to like use their momentum a lot try to drag try to extend their arms and then come out of the wall and do like basically a dino every move but you don't really need to do that I am is five foot she's one of the shortest climbers in this competition and she's actually using a she's actually using a method that Adam Ondra likes to use straight arms high as possible hit under first and then move it's a bit difficult on your shoulders if you're a beginner, so I don't blame you if you don't feel the one. <laughs> she's, she's amazing. I don't blame you if you don't feel uncomfortable with that. But try to use jugs, you know, try to try nice easy climbs, try to stay nice and low under the holds. Um, at this section, it's a little bit more of a powery technical section. And well, she's an amazing drop me here, but let's see how she does transition to the right side. So hits under her hands. Coming to the crux here, uh, she's She's, she's moving nice and slow. And there you go. That's a pretty good example of like a weird move, but she employ, employs the same principles, right? So her hands are a bit stretched apart, and she wants to kind of get over, transition to the left side. But if she let go, let's go her right hand here, it's going to be a bit difficult to fight the swing. So what does she do? She moves her body first gets her weight and hit under her hands first before releasing the right hand. So this is critical. Like, if you release your right hand first, you're gonna bound her off. So that you can see her, watch her body move. Watch her body move first. Body move, and then right hand let go. Um, this is like super good. Right hand, body move, and then transition to left hand. It's not easy to do this. and. Um, if you realize that this is actually a tall way of climbing, this is what tall climbers have to do because tall climbers actually suffer from uh, the bound door positions a lot more than short climbers. So, so she's actually employing tall climber styles um, to her climbing, even though she's such a short climber. Um, and that goes to show efficient climbing does not really, um, you know, this you know, doesn't really matter. Uh, whether you're short or tall, efficient climbing is more efficient, and, and that's it. And I'm already, um, you know, fighting hard at the last point. She's already won gold at this point. Uh, and look at her beautiful climbing style. Even though she's pumped as hell, she really sticks to this philosophy of hands, weight under her hands first before going. Um, but she does not stick it this time. <laughs> but if you want to learn one more extra thing about coordination dinos and coordination moves in general, which I left out on this video, you can check out the next video over here.